that's my plan. I don't know if it'll work. Alright guys, this is a little bit silly for me. I've got not one, not two, but three broken citrons right now. Which is pretty unusual for a random dude in Phoenix, Arizona. These are the only three citrons I've ever even seen in my life. All right, let's talk about my pronunciation of citron for a second. Now, the first time I ever heard it pronounced was on Top Gear, and on that show, it sounds like the English speakers say citron, and the French speakers say citroen. So I went on to YouTube before I made the last video on my 2CV, and I looked up a video, and it was native speakers saying the manufacturer of cars' names. So it had an Italian person saying Fiat, and an American saying Ford, and so on. And they get to Citroen, and it sounds to me like the French speaker says Citroen. And then it was followed by an American saying Chevrolet. So they found the one person in America that doesn't know how to pronounce Chevrolet. So after that, I thought, now I don't trust this video. So in this video, you'll see me pronounce it Citroen. That's what I feel comfortable with. My apologies if that's not correct. You can write in the comments the correct way of saying it. As far as I could tell on my 2CV video, the consensus was that it's pronounced Citroën du Chevaux. That's my best attempt, but from here on out, it's Citroën. Sorry guys if that's not right. Now of the three Citroëns, this one is in need of getting running the fastest. This is one of my clients and they said that when they put the key in and tried to turn it on, it was smoking from behind the dash. So they are obviously worried about the potential fire hazard there. And this thing has been getting more and more finicky over the last couple of years. Now I built this two years ago, but I didn't really do anything mechanically. Uh, at the time it was just a straightforward restoration and turned into a bar. And I did have this off in order to uh, paint the, uh, the vehicle and then paint, of course, this gauge housing here. And I remember the electrical system being an absolute mess. So they don't care about anything on this vehicle electronics wise, except for the fact that it's got to be able to start and run so that they can move it on site. So I don't need to worry about the headlights, the taillights, the turn signals, that kind of thing. We just need it running. So I'm probably going to pull off the, the, the dash gauges here, take a look at what's underneath, see what's going to be required to get this thing to start and then bypass everything else and just make this where it runs nice and simply. That's the idea, that's what I'm thinking right now, but first things first, I've gotta figure out what's going on behind the dash and then I'll start to pull away some of these panels to make it a little bit easier to rewire everything. All right guys, I gotta show you some things with this electrical. Now, first things first, I don't know how well we can see this, but this is our pow main power in to like all the switches and whatnot, and you can see that it is pretty well melted. So we're getting issues there. That's before it's fused too, so that's super crucial. Now, if you look at this wire here to the alternator, golly, let me see if I can film that a little better. It is all super crispy and exposed so that is no good and again this is unfused this line goes straight to the alternator here now I think I'll be able to wire this thing up relatively simply and let me show you why when you need to turn off the vehicle here you've got this cable that you pull which goes to the injection pump and shuts it down which to me tells me that there's no electronic signal to the motor to tell it to start or to shut off. You have to mechanically shut it off because it's a diesel and obviously it's a compression ignition. So what I think I can do, I think I can eliminate all the wiring that's going to the vehicle, just do a single cable directly to the starter. Then I can do a momentary switch to this wire here, which is for the uh, glow plugs. So I can have a momentary switch to turn on the glow plugs, a regular starting circuit, so I just turn the key, sends power to the starter, starts up the vehicle, glow plugs will have heated it up, compression ignition will get the vehicle running, you pull on the cable to turn it off as normal, and then the alternator over here, it looks like it's a simple two wire hookup with the main power going to the battery, and then a signal wire right here. So that should be super easy because I can hook up the signal wire to the ignition switch uh, so that the alternator still works and it keeps the battery charged. That's my plan. I don't know if it'll work. I think it'll work. 
Uh, I've done similar things before, but this is a goofy old French van, so who knows how this thing is put together. But that's what I'm going to do, and we will see together if it works or not. So let's go. Okay, so this is what I've decided as far as wiring goes. Uh, this is either going to look super simple or super complicated, I guess, depending on who you are. But uh, here's the battery. I'm going to do a large gauge wire to the back of the starter. I have two positive leads coming up. Both of them are 30 amp fused. One of them goes to a relay, which then goes to the glow plugs. The other one goes to the ignition starter switch here, which has a wire coming off to go to the starter solenoid to activate the starter. It does not need an ignition switch, so I will hook up the ignition switch to the alternator exciter, but that's after I get the vehicle running. I have a positive lead going to a light, and then I have a glow plug switch, which is grounded, and then when you push in a momentary switch, the ground excites the light so that you have a light that comes on so you know that the uh, the glow plugs are heating up and then I have a grounding wire which grounds out the relay to activate it to turn on all of the glow plugs this is what it looks like in real life here's the wiring and then here's the two 30 amp fuses and then I've got a relay here this is a 30 amp relay that then runs to the glow plugs and then the wiring continues on up through the vehicle everything that's inside there is now useless that's just dead wiring that i'm leaving just in case somebody in the future wants to make something on this work like the uh, lights or turn signals as far as the gauge cluster goes here this is going to be the light for the glow plug here is my ignition switch and then this is the glow plug switch so on this side this is what it looks like it's going to use just a regular keyed switch to turn it on and off. This button is going to activate the glow plugs and then this small little light up here is going to indicate that the glow plugs are on. So I have everything wired up and I'm ready to test it out. I am hopeful that this will work. So let me just put the gauges, let me screw those up there and then I'll get a camera set up so you guys can watch and we'll see if she starts. All right, I've got the uh, gauge housing all mounted up. I've got the battery hooked up. And if you see here, when I push this on, the light comes on. That is your glow plug light. And if you listen here, let me turn the mic around. So we know the relay is working okay. So glow plugs seem to be working and I should be able to start it up. So let me set up the camera and fire up. Alrighty, neutral, everything looks good, let's give it a whirl, glow plug on, See if we can get that alternator working. If you remember, the wiring on it was burnt, so we have to be very careful because I don't know why it was burnt. So I'll run a wire to the alternator and then I'll run a wire to the exciter, and then we'll check the voltage and see if she's putting out some uh, putting out some power. So this HY van is one of my favorite vehicles that I've worked on. And the reason is, about a year ago, maybe 18 months, the owners of it contacted me and they said that they needed it in two days running. It was not running. The starter was blown. They took it to a mechanic uh, who found out that a new starter from France would be at least a month out and it was going to be $800. And so he convinced them that he could rebuild it. So he took it all apart, damaged it in the process, and it could not be rebuilt. 
So they came to me and said, can you have a running in two days? And I said, yes. And I had no idea how I was going to do it. But I thought that it would be possible to adapt a starter that wasn't meant for a vehicle to the vehicle by using an adapter similar to how you make an adapter to put a different transmission to an engine. So I've always wanted to try it, but I never had the opportunity because I had always just been able to find the correct starter. So this is the first time that I ever was able to try that. So in order to do that, I knew that it had to be a powerful starter. It had to be uh, like a, just a high torque starter or a gear reduction unit. I knew that it had to fit obviously in the space there, but I knew that you can usually clock the fittings or the, uh, the mount, the, the mount that's on the front of the starter. You can usually unbolt the starter if you have to and move the solenoid one direction or another, you know, and then just rebolt it. And I thought maybe I'd have to weld on some tabs or something like that, but I thought it was possible. So I had two days to find it. And I started off by looking for a starter that had the correct size uh, starter gear, the correct number of teeth that turned in the correct direction, and that was either a gear reduction unit or a high torque starter. And then once I found that, I had to start the process of building the adapter. So let me show you how it turned out, uh, what went well and what went wrong. So let me show you now. All right, so I've already pulled the starter out. But I want to show you, here's the bracket that I made right here. And if you see, it's got two tabs welded on, and then it has three bolts that bolted then to the bell housing. And I don't know if you can see the ring gear in there on the flywheel, but there's the little teeth. So that's the adapter, it's a quarter inch thick. Let me show you what starter I ended up going with. So here's the starter. It's off a 2009 Toyota Sequoia. It had the correct number of teeth, the correct diameter gears, and it is a gear reduction unit, if you can tell. So it is very powerful. And it has worked flawlessly for the last, I think it's somewhere between 12 and 18 months. Now I told them that this was a temporary fix and I recommended that they immediately buy the correct starter from France because I didn't know how long it would last and my estimation was about six months, give or take. Uh, like I said, it's been working flawlessly for over a year. Now there is an issue that I want to show you guys and I'm not 100% sure of how it happened, but we will figure it out and we will fix it. So if you see the teeth here, they are worn down a little bit. They were making contact with the flywheel. Now I'm not exactly sure how that happened because I obviously measured a bunch of times to make sure that the flywheel was sitting right here because I wanted obviously the, it to retract and not make contact with it. And the, when I started it, you know, the 10, 15 times that I started it, I never had any issues with it. But somewhere along the lines, it started to wear out. So I'm not sure if the flywheel had a little bit of movement to it or if the flywheel had, was, was, is just off center so that as it spins, it kind of, kind of catches a little bit each time. But it did end up grinding it down. Now, I, I did measure it this morning and I came up with, what is this, uh, like 32 millimeter, 31, 32 millimeter. And then I looked at this starter and if you notice, Boy, that is right where the damage is. So the flywheel was definitely making contact with it. So my initial thought was that as it was trying to engage, maybe it was hitting the tooth and then spinning around and then wearing it down, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems to be wearing all the time. And then I don't know, let me get a little light on. It's a little bit hard to tell, but you can see where the flywheel is engaging with the teeth and it's making full contact. It's going all the way to the edge there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind down the, the head of this just a little bit to take off the portion that's been damaged. And then I'm going to use a file and I'm going to carefully file the tips of these teeth to help, help it make a better engagement when it goes to start. And then maybe I'll get another year out of this sucker because I do not think that they ever ended up ordering the correct starter for this thing. <laughs>
All right, this is how the teeth are looking now. I tapered them just a little bit. I think they look really sharp. All right, let's see if the uh, starter engages okay. If so, I can put all the engine covers back on.